By entering the imagination, we cross into numinous precincts, and from within this territory, all events in the soul require religious reflection. Archetypal psychology is ultimately a religious project since its primary concern is for the soul and its relationship with the gods. Hillman's conception locates soul in a non-human realm where it is more of a perceptive quality rather than an object or substance. Furthermore, this perceptive quality of soul is self-reflective It differentiates, mediates, communicates. It imaginates, congregates, and deepens events into experiences. As a perceptive functionality, soul is inseparable from image. It is a visionary and myth-making activity that experiences itself through dream, image, and fantasy that mode which recognizes all realities as primarily symbolic or metaphorical. Jung also placed high value on images and their function in the psyche. Indeed, Jung said that image is psyche. And Hillman follows Jung by confirming the monumental purpose of images in human psychology. Both men argue that images are the primary data of psychic life, where soul is image and image is soul. Therefore, understanding the nature of image would lead to a deeper understanding of not just the nature of soul, but also its needs and requirements. Turning to the word archetypal, which qualifies Hillman's psychology, is already a move toward images, since archetypes themselves are inherently inscrutable and intrinsically unknowable, so that there can be no conception or experience of an archetype without an image. Images are the language of the archetypes, and if image is psyche, then archetypes are psyche too. An archetype brings a particular style of perception or a pattern into which experience can flow and grow into an intelligible psychological metaphor. So an archetypal perspective is a soulful and imaginal perspective. Through overpowering numinous images, archetypes seize the soul and induce psychic action, which then sensuously unwinds itself into a long-winded drama with countless actors and as many acts. These archetypal events are metaphor, myth, and story that take place in what Henri Corbin has called the Mundus Imaginalis, a world of celestial spheres and mystical cities located between the empirical world and the world of abstract intellect. Because of their residence in the celestial yet ontologically real human, non-human sphere, archetypes are imagined by Hillman as veritable gods, and since they are innumerable, Hillman conceives of psyche as essentially polytheistic. Gods in the archetypal images they inhabit are perceived and experienced through imaginal stories and metaphors of the psyche. Thus, they allow the soul to make and experience itself. This process of soul-making is the primary concern of archetypal psychology. For Hillman, the human being is inside the psyche, not the other way around. Therefore, the most urgent work of life is to awaken to the inherent divinity of our souls, to internalize external reality and to transmute it into metaphorical, imaginal, and symbolical reality, which is the only reality the soul can recognize. The literal events of everyday life must be taken inward to the soul's realm, where they are transformed into the myths and dramas and stories of our polytheistic souls and their archetypal patterns. Archetypes are the root metaphors of the psyche and give it its flow and direction. They are the ideas of the soul, 
tools with which it weaves itself into illustrious or tragic patterns. Without this procedure, we are left with nothing but the literal world of history, society, clinical psychopathology, or metaphysical truths. And these literalized aspects of external life are alien to the soul and naturally cause alienation and harm. Archetypal psychology therefore encourages us to recollect the gods in all psychological activity. Through the imaginative function, we can realize that we are made of the non-human stuff of the soul and that this non-human stuff is essentially divine. This is the work of soul-making.